I've been a contributor to Flutter, Flutter Firebase, and the Community Plus plugins. So that is something I do on the side. And uh, today we have had a lot of sessions on Gemini, you know, how do you, uh, like, uh, everything about AI. But I wanted to make my session a bit more focused towards building applications using it. And uh, the framework of my choice would be Flutter. So very quick question here, like, how many of you work with Flutter? Can I see a raise of hands? Okay, awesome, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. I was expecting very few hands, but this is uh, wonderful. Um, for the unfamiliar, Flutter is a cross-platform framework. So it's open source. It is used to build applications across uh, a variety of operating systems with the same code base. Essentially, you have to write code once, and Flutter would manage taking it across devices. Uh, it would be made available as an Android app, as an iOS application. Uh, it would also run as a web application, and you can also use it on your desktop devices, such as Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. So I had a demo running outside, uh, which took all of these different operating systems, and it ran that Gemini-capable application on it. So that is uh, what my talk is structured around. So essentially, you can have your application which is using the Gemini API across devices. Uh, it would run on the web device. It would run on the mobile devices that you have and the desktop uh, devices that you have with you. So how do we get started? Uh, we'll cover <clears throat> the whole process in basically three steps. The first one is to set up an API key. Uh, to interact with the Gemini API, you need an API key, which you can quickly go over to aistudio.google.com and get an API key there. It's a very simple setup. You have an option to get an API key uh, on the studio itself. You copy this API key uh, and you bring it back. Uh, you save it for now. But uh, we want to be able to access this API key safely. So if you are uh, building with Flutter, you have this option to pass in an API key by using the dart define flag. So you can define the API key variable to be this particular value. Uh, so the first step is essentially getting this API key. The second step is to install uh, a package. So when working with Flutter, we have uh, pub.dev, which has over 50,000 packages, uh, last uh, I remember. And it has a lot of community support built in, but the Flutter Google Generative AI SDK Take some time, it would uh, add a bunch of files to your project, but once you have done that, you can get started using the generative model uh, inside your application. So that too is very simple. You have to create an instance called model, which would take in a model name and take in the API key that we had earlier copied, and it would give you access to a bunch of functions like model.generateContent, uh, model dot generate content stream if you are working with streaming and all those other use cases. So this is all that you need to do. Three step process, very simple uh, to get started adding Gemini to your Flutter application. And finally, you can uh, you know just use one of those functions dot generate content to get a response which you can use inside your AI applications. So final response equals to await model dot generate content, which is the statement that would be using. Uh, here, this content variable takes in that prompt text uh, that we want to work with, and it would uh, simply give you a response that you can you know build out uh, in your UI. But uh, we don't want to keep it that basic. You know, you could have read the documentation to, uh, to do something like this. Uh, I want to dwell a little bit more deeper into the different use cases that you might uh, be expected to, you know, work on. So uh, there is the basic uh, chat use case that you want to build out a simple chat application. Like, uh, you know, you ask it a question, it gives you like, write me an essay and it does that for you. Uh, write me a poem, uh, do something for me, create a five-step uh, educational uh, process or something like that. 
you want to have some context uh, that is added to your prompt. So let us say you're working on an application. For example, uh, you wanted to know something beforehand before, uh, like you want to build out a medical assistant and you want to give it certain information, a bit of history before you start asking it questions. So you can do that. You want it to be multi-model. You want to use images, et cetera, inside your Flutter application and run Gemini on top of it. You can do that as well. And finally, generate embeddings that you can use to build out like a content recommendation system. So that is possible as well. Uh, let's dive a little bit uh, deeper into it. So the first uh, thing that I want to focus on is building a chat-like interface because that's the basic thing that you want to do. In Flutter, uh, we can create a simple text field that would take in an input from the user. This uh, text field could have a controller which will basically give you access uh, to the text that is there inside uh, this field. And once I have that, I can take that text and pass in uh, as content to my Gemini model, which again is a very simple, uh, similar process that we had seen earlier, like model.generate content. And we pass in an iterable content uh, variable so you'll notice uh, that it is a list of content like content.text and then you pass it uh, to get a response on top of it uh, this is where uh, everything happens this is where you ask your model to, uh, to give you a response based on the content so you give it a simple uh, question like write a poem uh, on why flutter is amazing uh, and it would give you back a response that can be rendered on the ui so I have uh, the demo application working here. Uh, right now, like you can ask it uh, like a question to write an essay on democracy and it would uh, give you back a response which can be rendered in your UI uh, to view. But that is not all. You want to have your model to uh, have like a certain history or you know multi-turn chat uh, where you should be able to send it a message and then it responds with something and then you send it another message so multi-turn application where you go from system to user and back to system and more of like that so with the generative ai sdk we get access to this chat when initializing your model you can also uh, initialize a chat uh, which you can do simply by running model dot start chat and every time you want to have a response in a multi-turn chat, you can simply uh, give it some name and uh, start it out like, okay, let's start with the first symptom. Uh, how, what do you think uh, could be the issue here? So you can do this by having the history variable for your uh, model chat. And once that is done, you can create a new iterable content uh, variable and then again pass it to your model with the send message uh, function. So you can pass it to that and it would begin responding to that previous history and then also add in the new message. So this is an example of a simple multi-turn chart where it goes from system to user, then again to the system. System here is the model that is responding uh, to the conversations. And we also wanted uh, these particular different charts to be, you know, uh, synchronized with each other. So if I have a chart system that is running like right now on my um, <clears throat> Flutter macOS app, I also want to be able to view it uh, on my uh, mobile device uh, that I have with me. So I can synchronize these charts using something as simple as a real-time uh, DB. So I can use Firebase Firestore uh, to synchronize the different messages. The ones that were sent by me and then the uh, response of the model can be added as well and can be rendered in the UI. So this is done using Firebase uh, real time. One other uh, thing that I really like about uh, uh, using Firebase here is you can, you know, order these by a particular timestamp. So every time a message is sent, you can use dot order by when getting these snapshots back so that they can be rendered in UI in a particular order. Like this was the first message, then the second one came in and the third one. So they'll be synchronized in a proper uh, way as such. And then uh, we come to the second use case. So, so far we have only talked about uh, building out like a basic chat system. We have talked about 
making it multi turn like you want your user to send message and then uh, you want the system so for that they have the start chat option but we also want to be able uh, to use like images uh, with our gemini uh, models as such so here what happens is we have multi uh, modality options here so how do you do this with flutter we'll first start by picking an image so we'll pick an image from the system libraries and we'll read them as bytes and once we have that we'll pass it to our model but uh, in this case you'll notice like the model that we use is gemini pro vision earlier we were working with gemini pro but now we'll switch out the model to be gemini pro vision because we want to be able to send it images and it will respond uh, based on those images so let's break it even further uh, by actually looking at uh, the code here the first step pick an image uh, we can use a external dependency again uh, if you go over to pub.dev you'll find the image picker package which very simply lets you pick these images uh, save them as x files and then uh, you can convert or read them as bytes to use them further inside your flutter application so once we have that uh, image this is how uh, working with images uh, is done uh, in the google generative ai sdk so we have a text part of the whole prompt like what is the difference between these two pictures and then we can pass it in the two pictures uh, either as asset files or if you pick them from your gallery you can pass in as uh, bytes and then simply send it to the model uh, with the model dot generate content but this time instead of using content uh, dot uh, text we'll be using here content dot multi which would also allow us uh, to send in this image part uh, to our uh, gemini model so content dot multi instead of uh, content uh, dot text here and uh, we have this image uh, we read it as bytes uh, we have our text prompt uh, ready here which uh, we have simply hard coded for now like write a description of the image but you can also have the user input it or if you are working on embedded devices so uh, a lot of ai pins are coming around right now so i i had a demo working on uh, linux instead of using like um, image from the gallery as such you can have the camera module uh, attached to a raspberry pi to take an image and use uh, the audio module to ask the input from the user and combine those two into a multi uh, model system where you have that um, user prompt of like what this image is and the image uh, which is taken by the raspberry pi itself uh, send it to the model to build like uh, embedded uh, ai system uh, as such so we take our image part the text part and we replace our model with the gemini pro vision because we want to use the multi model system uh, multi model input here and finally we'll get a response which would be a, a image description to show and this can be again uh, rendered uh, into the ui so let us uh, see an example of this uh, i have a small uh, um, module as part of this use case so this this is a little uh, very less zoomed in but you can essentially select an image here uh, i'll take an image and of, of an apple and i will wait for it to process so in the background what is happening is it is taking that image reading it as bytes and uh, then it would return a description of the image which um, should be like the image shows this red apple it has this green uh, leaf a short stem and everything around that so you can modify this uh, prompt to be anything uh, you can also change this uh, image to be something else because uh, i had this image on my desktop you can maybe use uh, from any other file uh, the image that you want to run the gemini on so one more essential concept when it works uh, when it comes to working um, with you know ai uh, models is streaming essentially with front end frameworks because we want to show the user uh, that something is happening uh, a response is being generated so we use streaming in that uh, case and uh, it helps us for faster interaction so by default uh, the model only returns a response once you know everything is done and processed but we can get uh, faster interactions by using 
dot generate content stream instead of the dot generate content that we had earlier uh, seen. This is again uh, provided by the Google Generative AI SDK, so it should be very simple. Uh, you can simply uh, use model dot content uh, generate content stream and it will send you chunks in response and you can you know render them uh, accordingly in your UI. <laughs> So uh, the last part uh, of the four use cases that we have seen so far, so one was the basic chat, uh, the other was uh, a bit more going into multi-model, the third was streaming, and the last is embeddings right now. So if you're building out a, like a movie application that basically uh, recommends you movies on the different um, uh, different preferences, so you want to use embeddings, so you'll uh, create an embeddings of the movies that are there in, in a year and uh, you can save them to a vector database. Um, once uh, like a user comes to your application and they ask uh, like, okay, I, I, I like this movie, what are some other movies that you recommend based on top of it? So you can use something like cosine similarity to uh, find related images from the vector database and then, uh, you know, um, ask uh, uh, an LLM to with prompt injection maybe to uh, recommend like what are the similar movies there and it could do that. Uh, with the Google's uh, generative AI SDK, we have uh, the embedding model that we can use uh, to create some embeddings. It's again very simple uh, to do so. We can use the embedding 001 model. Um, Instead of again using Gemini Pro uh, when defining your model, you can use embedding 001, pass in the API key that you had, and uh, you can tell it the text content uh, that we want to create an embedding of, and wait for the result by using model uh, dot embed content, and here pass in the content that you want to create embeddings of. So it would print out that value. Um, as part of uh, this demo, again, uh, I have this option to create embeddings here. Uh, I will not be saving it to a vector database that is like um, uh, a bit further, but for the uh, application of uh, this generative AI SDK, I can type in my name here and then I will submit. Access to a few other packages that you can use. So, for example, I have uh, this option to select a PDF and I would get it back as a string. And this string can be passed on to a model uh, to, you know, run some analysis on. And so, one of the requests uh, when working with Gemini was like a um, person was interested in, uh, you know, uh, running their medical reports just for, uh, you know, understanding them better. So, you can have a bunch of other packages that you work with in integration um, in your Flutter application to build out these unique experiences which are made powerful by the Gemini API. And um, you can also, uh, you know, using prompt, uh, uh, by using the same chart history and the prompt modification, you know, have the AI module build out specific application. For example, here I have an option to say, um, Here I have an option uh, to give uh, the AI uh, a prompt like this, where a user tells them like, I, okay, I am in this place for these many days, and it would generate an itinerary based on top of it. So this should to take some time, but it would come up with like what you should do on day one, day two, day three, and day four, and uh, finally like uh, depart from uh, daily after.